In this video, I'm going to look at word study features that Bible software packages have. Now this builds on my last video where I looked at the genius of Strong's Concordance. So if you haven't seen that, I'll have a link at the end of this video and underneath in the description. Go back and watch that because that's important to understand this one. This is not a tutorial video as such. Rather, I want to demonstrate the power that a tagged text brings to the ability to do Bible studies with these software packages. Let's jump into it. If you're like most people, you want to go deeper in your word studies in the Bible, especially learning something about the Greek or Hebrew words. So how do you do this if you don't know Greek or Hebrew? Well, in the last video, I looked at the development of these huge books called concordances and how they link your English translation to the original languages using a numbering system. In the past 40 years, the use of computers has taken what the church developed over the past six to 700 years and put it on steroids. So hang on, we're going for a fast ride. The genius of Strong's Concordance was that by using a numbering system, he was able to link the original Greek and Hebrew back to the English. Bible software takes that tagging idea and moves it to a whole new level. Let me see if I can show you. My name is David Paris, and for the past 20 or 30 years, I've been teaching in seminaries and graduate institutions around the world in the area of biblical studies, especially New Testament and Greek. The goal of this challenge is to take what I've been teaching and make it available to anyone, anywhere on the internet. If you enjoy these videos, hit the subscribe button. That way YouTube will let you know when new videos become available. And if you like it also, give it a thumbs up. But perhaps the best thing you can do for me is share it with other people. That really helps get the word out. First, a little bit of history and a confession. In the last video, I said that I gave my concordances away over 20 years ago. And the only time I missed them during all that time was just two weeks ago when I decided to make a video about concordances. Why did I give them away? And yes, I think I had three or four good ones. Well, once I started to use software, I noticed I had not even opened up or pulled them down from my shelves. Sort of like once I got a cell phone, I stopped using the landline. It wasn't that I planned on not using my concordance with the landline telephone, it's just that they were quietly displaced by something much better. Verse Search was one of the first software programs released for personal computers. It was released somewhere around 1980 for the Apple II. Bible Reader came out in 1985, but in my opinion, it was GramCord that really put computer programs on the map. GramCord, sort of a playoff grammatical concordance, got started in 1976 at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. It didn't just tag the Greek words, but their grammatical features as well. GramCord's databases were adopted by Altree and Accordance. Logos developed a very similar tagging system of their own. For example, if I look at the Greek text of John 1.1, I can get all the grammatical information and parsing on each word. I can also pull up a graphical display that shows the syntactical or grammatical relationships between the words, either by way of a traditional grammatical diagram or through syntactical branching. But you didn't come here to look at Greek words. Let's look at how this works in English. The tagging of English words and original language text extends far beyond grammatical information about the words and how they're translated. Tagging allows for words, verses, and text to be linked to dictionaries, commentaries, pictorial archives, maps, and other texts. If Strong's was developed during the age of horse and buggies, literally, modern software packages are definitely part of the digital space age. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to be using Accordance to demonstrate these features. Why? Well, the very simple reason is that I cut my teeth on Accordance and I've been using it for the past 30 years or so. Logos and Olive Tree can perform similar searches. All three are excellent but each do it slightly differently with their own little nuances. But this is my video and this is what I'm at home in. If you use a corns, Logos, or Olive Tree, please drop a line in the comments below about what search features and tagging you find the most useful. 
I think other viewers will find that very, very helpful. Now it's time for some show and tell. I'm going to open a copy of the New American Standard Bible and search for the word heavens like we have here in Genesis 1.1. Notice I get 179 results. Now I'm being a little cheeky here because when I did this search, I only looked for the English language words. So when I searched for the word heavens, it looked for that exact word, H-E-A-V-E-N-S, the exact word. If we drop the S off the end and search again, now I have 436 instances where the exact word heaven is found in the New American Standard Bible. Now these search results are almost exactly the same as looking up the English word in a concordance in the front part where you have an index of all the occurrences of that word in your translation. In the last video, I explained that the genius of Strong's concordance was to link the Greek and Hebrew text to the King James Version using a numbering system between the two languages. And right now, I'm only searching in the English text. So let's fix this by using the Strong's numbering system within the software. If I hover over the word heavens in Genesis 1-1, I see that it is tagged with the Strong's number H8064. H for Hebrew, 8064 is the Strong's number. So let's search for the number instead of the word. All that I have to do is hover over it and then click search for the key number, or I can type the number in the search bar above. Now notice, I get 392 results this time instead of 179. Also, if we go to Genesis 128, we can see that sky is now one of our search results. If we were just searching the English text, we would have never seen that connection. But the New American Standard Bible translates the Hebrew word here as heavens from Genesis 1.1 as sky in 128 and Strong's numbering allows us to see that. Now this brings up an important point that you need to realize. In order to harness the power of these software packages, you're gonna to need to buy what is called a tagged version of the translation you wanna use. Tagged text costs more. Why? Because a lot of work has gone into tagging the information to these texts, but they're not outrageous. For example, the tagged version of the New American Standard Bible usually runs around $20. The New English Translation, around $20. And the software companies will let you know that it's a tagged text or has Strong's number in the description of that text. Finally, just like with Strong's concordance, these words are linked to the Strong's Dictionary at the back. And we can open that up in the software as well. And that's about as far as we could go if we were using a print version of Strong's Concordance or another concordance. But the behind the scenes tagging that the software packages use go far beyond what Strong's is able to do. Beyond Strong's. Let's say we wanna do a word study on the word world in John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Double click on the word world and then click on search for the word. Now this will pull up all the occurrences of world in our English New American Standard Bible, like we saw with Genesis. We quickly see that this word is used 212 times in the English text of the New American Standard Bible. But let's open the analysis feature to pull up a chart that shows us that most of the occurrences of this word are in the New Testament, which is rather interesting, but not very helpful right now. Let's go back to John 3.16 and search for the Strong's number behind world this time, like we did when we used the Strong's concordance at the library. Now we drop to 151 hits. Why? Because we are only searching the New Testament this time. We are searching for the Greek word cosmos that the New American Standard Bible translated as world in this verse. So we won't find this Greek word in the Hebrew text of the Old Testament. That's why our hits are reduced. The software packages also bring some powerful analytic features to their software. If we play around with the analysis charts and select a bar chart display, we can see that the Greek word is translated as world 184 times in the New American Standard Bible, a dormant once, 
and worlds once. What if we switch to a table chart to show us where this word is used? When we pull this up, we can see that John loves the word world. He uses it 78 times in his gospel and 24 times in his letters. So of the 184 times cosmos is used in the Greek New Testament, John uses it 102 times. Now, if you like charts, we can easily switch to a graphical view of this table bar chart as well. You can see how these features can easily lead you down some rabbit holes. So are like Morpheus offering Neil the red or the blue pill. Cool, you say, but we are just getting started. Strong stroke of genius was the addition of numbers to link the Greek and the Hebrew to the English text. Unlike Strong, the tagging and linking features within a software package allow you to do so much more and so much more quickly, almost instantaneously. I can search for the word world in Greek dictionaries. Let me bring up Mounce's Greek dictionary here. This is going to give you a better and more thorough definition than Strong's, and it's an excellent Greek dictionary to have if you're an English reader of the text. It allows you to go deeper and get a fuller understanding of the word. These tagging features also allow you to create interlinears based on the criteria that you want to look at. I like to put the Greek or the Hebrew text at the very top, but you can arrange the text however you wish. Now notice, as I mouse over each word, I can see it's Strong's number, I put that there. Then I'm going to add the English word from the New American Standard Bible. I can see also it's transliteration, so I know how to pronounce the word, sort of. But what if I want to compare translations? Let's add the New English translation to the very bottom here as well. And when I used to teach in Latin America, I would put the Spanish and English text side by side. That way, the students and I could follow each other in our languages as I projected this up on a screen. This linking also applies to the level of concepts, verses, books, and ideas. So you can quickly go from your text to a dictionary article or a relevant passage in a commentary to a map. And even within those, you can search for words, phrases, ideas, or even verse references and find more information than you could with the print editions. So for example, if I open up the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia and I search for the entry world, I get the definition here. But what if I do a search for all the places where this is mentioned within the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia? I can pull up all those references and see information that I would not have found if I was just using the print edition. Now this is just scratching the surface for what you can do with these software packages and I hope you realize just how much further the tagging and links that are embedded in these packages allow you to do. We are truly in a different age for doing biblical studies than before the digital revolution. If you want to know how to do these types of searches in accordance all tree or logos in more depth and more of a tutorial type video, I'm going to include the links for a few of these tutorial videos from the different companies below. That way you can go to their sites and see exactly how they do these types of searches within their software and see if it fits with the way you think or not. If you click up here on this little cartoon on my face, then YouTube will subscribe you to my channel. Down here I have a link to the video I did on Strong's Concordance. I highly recommend you check that out. And then over here, this is a link to the video that YouTube thinks you will enjoy watching most next. And there are brilliant people there at YouTube. Until next week, peace.